I remember calling my initial Plinks review from 2019, something like that, the critical limitation. And that's because if you got a secondary weapon that has critical chance, critical damage, and that's it. No status chance, no forced impact procs, no nothing you can leverage outside of critical chance and critical damage, it's simply not gonna perform fantastically well. The best weapons in Warframe are the ones that can leverage most if not all of the multipliers. So I was super excited when I heard that a tenant Plinks was on the way. So you can imagine my disappointment when I saw 12% status chance. But hey, perhaps the weapon performs better than it looks. And today my friends we're gonna be diving deeper into this secondary weapon. I got a cheapo build, something that a more newer Tenno can get into, but fret not, we also got the end game set up with prime mods, galvanized mods, essentially we're gonna max it out, take it to the steel path, see how she performs. And it does have big bada boom explosions. That said though, please bear in mind that my built in guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please. Bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tenet Plinks. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Tenet Plinks is a variation on the Plinks, but this one? This one is more powerful in every single way. And it also gained a secondary fire mode. But first, primary fire mode, semi-automatic trigger. Hits can attack even though it looks like a projectile, some sort of beam hitting your target with no recoil whatsoever. This will be the maximum rate of fire. As you saw there, pinpoint accuracy with no problem whatsoever and no recoil whatsoever. Did you also notice something else? This is one of them fancy recharge weapons. After you stop firing for about 0.8 seconds, it will start regenerating ammo at the rate of 20 per second. That means half a second during the recharge thing and your magazine is back to full which is then which is not really all that fantastic now the secondary fire mode will be consuming the entire magazine and releasing this projectile that is gonna draw enemies in the radius is six meters and no prime fulmination will not be increasing that range just the range of the explosion and then big bada boom explosion and it's gonna be ragdolling enemies as you saw it's actually quite the potent little push so if you're looking for a little bit of crowd control you got it there now the secondary fire mode also has a bit of a charge up as you saw and you cannot stop it and unfortunately you cannot hold the shot in like you would with a lanka for example to fire when you're good and ready you simply press the trigger and then it has a mind of its own not only that it also costs you a larger delay until the weapon starts reloading so it's a bit of a bummer in terms of usability now let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with we're gonna make a quick comparison with the normal planks yes you guys remember the planks we saw it when it was released and then nobody cared about it because it was too weak the planks was an excellent weapon for critical chance and critical damage 32 percent with 3.0 x critical multiplier but as proved without actual status chance then the weapon didn't really perform all that well. We got more crit, this time 44 instead of 32, same multiplier which is sky high already, and more status chance at 12%, and you might say, oh perfect man, we got enough status. Sadly not, because of the measly number of attacks you put into your target, that 12% is still not enough, and I will demonstrate so in gameplay. Damage, 70 versus 46, but what you gotta bear in mind that that 70 there is without the bonus of a progenitor it goes much higher than that you add another 60 percent to that 70 a whole lot more damage than the regular planks and of course it doesn't have a secondary fire mode the normal version as you can see mine is a 59.84 percent toxin roll and you might be curious okay dude tell me what is the best element to go for the planks and you got a couple of options you can go for toxin like i went for toxin especially if you want to go for one big wallop worth of damage like i recommend for the planks but you can also go for heat heat is what i usually recommend simply because it's a more safer alternative Magnetic is also an option if you want to get the most out of something like galvanized shot. Keep in mind you will have to prep your targets with another weapon, okay? Pepper them with a whole lot of statuses, get the most out of galvanized shot. Magnetic works in that case. I also seen the idea of let's go for impact on the plinks, so we go for hemorrhage. Because you know the fire rate is low, we're going to be getting the 2x effect and all whatnot. My friends, it's important not to mistake this one with the Spyrax. The Spyrax is an excellent platform to go for plus impact because the Spyrax has guaranteed impact procs. The plinks does not. 
The planes has a little bit of impact on it on the secondary fire mode, but this is the projectile making physical contact with a target, this impact that you see right here. This bad eye boom explosion does not have any impact whatsoever and you don't get anything on the primary fire mode as well. Even if you go out of your way and get an impact planks and then you get your maximum 60% on because of the low status chance and because this weapon is terrible at proc consistency, it is not worth going for hemorrhage from my humble point of view. You will get instances where it works fine and you will get instances where you will hate the weapon. Choice, as always, is yours. Now, what else we got? Accuracy is fine, as you saw there, fire rate is super low, magazine is low, noise alarming, reload at 0.8 seconds, as you saw there, that's the delay, riven disposition of nothing, you can get decent rivens for the blinks, I would not recommend it at this time, simply because they're not worth it, either that or they cost an arm and a leg, if you get something decent like multi-shot or something. Critical chance is sky high, critical damage is sky high, status chance is too low, again considering the fire rate, considering the reload, considering the magazine, considering how many shots you are capable, even with multi-shot taken into account, to put into a target how quickly, status chance is low. Puncture damage by default, and as you see here, a little bit of heat, mine got combined with toxin, we'll fix that in the modding section. Now the secondary fire deals radiation damage and detoxin is from my progenitor. Now if you were to go about this standard wise and try to make a normal let's say quote unquote normal build for the planks it would look something like this. You got yourself the damage, you got yourself the multi shot, we got 360-60 mods on here, frostbite, pistol, pestilence and scorch bringing up that status chance to 33.6. Now the point to this build is just to prove how reliable in procs this weapon isn't. We also got lethal torrent for more fire rate and more multi shot again the fire rate is painful on this one critical damage you can get better with sharpened bullets instead of target cracker but target cracker is a bit more reliable critical chance we're gonna be going with creeping bullseye honestly because of that minus fire rate on the plinks and how sluggish the weapon feels already you can consider pistol gambit the problem with this one it's a massive 80 percent difference between this one and creeping bullseye and you got little torrent over there to kind of offset that minus 20% fire rate. So there you go. It's going to be an option. It's going to be up to you. Now we're going to be testing out the weapon. I want to make sure that I don't have any Warframe buffs whatsoever. As you gentlemen and ladies know, it's very easy to make a weapon seem powerful if you throw everything at it and the kitchen sink. We're going to be spawning in level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goons and the Exo Gog stat. Essentially, my friends, if you add enough synergies and Warframe buffs, you can make the junkiest of weapons seem overpowered. We're gonna hit level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons headshot, and we're gonna use the secondary fire mode as well. Four vitals, one heat. We got, what is that, puncture, two vitals, three vitals, can I get a fourth? No, I can't. Nothing, nothing, two heats over there, fantastic, three heats, one vital, can it kill off the target? Uh, yeah, come on, you got it, you got it, ah, almost, but no, cigar. As you can see, the proc consistency out of this one, even with a 43% status chance, isn't all that fantastic. And if you were to go against an Exogog stat, I know you guys love this one because it's a bit more tougher than the Corrupted Heavy Goons, the story is even worse than before. Not to mention that I'm going for headshots, but if you were to go for a body shot, that's an entire magazine. Two magazines. It's still not gonna kill it. You get what I'm saying? If you wanna kill with procs, you need a whole lot more than that. So do better that one in mind. And this being a critical weapon, you gotta go for headshots. Otherwise, you're gonna be losing yourself that bonus multiplier and you don't wanna lose it. If you don't know what I mean, look at the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on critical chance, critical damage, the hidden multipliers, essentially the works. Now the performance of the weapon for a brand new tenant weapon is mediocre at best, but of course this is not the only way to build the plinks. My recommendation to you is to forget about the primary fire mode and simply focus on the secondary fire mode. Now you saw them ragdolling and all whatnot, but keep in mind that those targets are not dead, they were sent flying, yes, but the damage that the weapon dealt with this specific build was, I don't know, 30% of their health or something. Let's see if I can focus. Look at that, look at that. Very little damage actually done to the target. The ragdoll effect, fantastic. Oh, look, here over here. Two gogs that barely touched, essentially. Now, if you focus on this one, you should be aware that the current... Well, a special mod currently is working on the secondary fire mode of the Plinks, and that one is called Synth 
charge. And if you're gonna be using Sin Charge to max it out and try to get the biggest wall of worth of damage since status chances, obviously, and status applications is not exactly the weapon's strong suit, then you're gonna be going for something of the sort. Now, if you guys don't have the Prime mods or the Galvanized mods, you can simply go for the normal versions, except Prime Expel Corrupted. You might as well go for more critical chance or Lethal Torrent instead of this one. The reason why we're using it is because we're trying to angle as much multipliers as we can to get the most amount of damage out of the weapon. So, we're not going for 60s, we're going for 90s, okay? Drop the 60s, go for 90s, and go for the biggest wall of worth of damage that you can with Sin Charge. We got Prime Target Cracker and this one. And we also got Creeping Bullseye. You can go, in this case, for Prime Pistol Gambit. You're getting 13% less critical chance, but you're also not getting that minus 20% fire rate. Honestly, it's gonna come down to you. You can either have 132 critical chance or 126. In both cases, you are over 100%, so you don't really need to go out of your way to get more crit. On that topic, Galvanized Crosshairs. Keep in mind that in Warframe, the more you add of the same multiplier, more crit, more flat damage, more whatever, the less you're gonna be getting out of it. This is not a diminishing returns mechanic built into Warframe, this is a diminishing returns mechanic built into math. Yes, the more you add of the same multiplier, the less you get out of. So seeing a weapon that is heavy duty on crit and thinking, throw all the crit in the game at it, is not the way to get the most amount of damage or the most optimal build out of that weapon. So do bear that one in mind. We can go more into detail if you like. Now, little momentum in the XL slot is optional and secondary merciless since you're gonna be aiming for the feet for the most part. That secondary fire draws targets and we're not gonna go for headshots which is a crying shame for a critical weapon but you will see the weapon performs fantastically well. We're gonna pump up the level just so I can demonstrate how powerful this actually is. Kill all the targets, bump up the level to as high as I can and we're gonna be showcasing this one in Steel Path. The only thing that you should do before is make sure you have your galvanized uh, multi-shot mod stacked. Yeah, so just go for headshots. When you can one-shot level 165 corrupted heavy goons with the primary fire, then you know you have enough. Almost enough. There we go. We should be good on that one. I'm just gonna go up so I can get a bird's eye view for the secondary fire. Look at that. See that guy? Dead. No health bar. Now, it's gonna send them flying, but all of them were 100% dead. Let's try that again. See that? No health bar. No health bar. The targets are absolutely annihilated. This is the power of the secondary fire mode of the Plinks. In normal, average everyday missions, using this one consistently because of that stupid reload time is a bit of a pain in the arse. I will not lie to you guys. One more, well, a couple of more, look at that. Beautiful. Now, you should also know one more thing. The Plinks gets 10% more damage per each ammo consumed for the secondary fire mode so do bear that one in mind you can make a build where you stack magazine capacity yes and essentially try to get the most you can out of that multiplier it's another mechanic you can check it over on the wiki let me activate the passive but increase parkour velocity because why the hell not almost dead there for the god stat 165 this is the build i recommend you go for I believe this is the best way to get some good results out of the planks again it's not necessarily the only way it is what I believe to be the most efficient and somewhat fun way simply because big explosions. Now of course killing standing still targets is pretty easy so we're gonna go to steel path and see what this puppy can do. One shot made easy. Welcome to the void my friends. Now as you can see these are uh, the corrupted. Yeah the corrupted and we're doing this in steel path. I'm not even gonna use my secondary fire mode on the playing soul that often simply because it's not needed. As long as you can get a headshot the amount of damage will be supreme up to 2 million depending on the target. And of course if I see something bigger I can always switch to the big ol charge up mechanic. Now, there's really not a whole lot I can show you in Steel Path outside of, hey, look, I'm killing Steel Path enemies and it's pretty easy and it's not a big deal and all whatnot. The Plinks is more than capable 
of doing Steel Path. Now, what I'm using as a setup is good old Revenant. His passive, his second ability, Mesmer Skin, is absolutely insane. It will apply crowd control to the targets, which will make it easier for me to get my headshots. Let's be honest, using Revenant is borderline cheating in this case. And we also got a Panzer Full Profile. As you saw there, my Plinx is right now modded with the 90s Corrosive, so I got Corrosive and Heat on my weapon, which does wonders against Ferrite Armor. If you're gonna be shooting primarily Alloy Armor, then I would suggest you go for Radiation, since you got a 75% bonus and all that. Now, I'm looking for a big target. That's what I'm waiting for. 214% orange crit there. Look, there's a big target. I'm going to use my charge up. That's it. That is it. Honestly, I don't really use the charge up attack unless I see a bigger target. Something like that. Eximus. There was an Eximus. There was a couple of Eximus. I don't know. I thought it was an Eximus here a second ago. I, I swear there was an Eximus a second ago. And I do believe, my friends, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in Steel Path. This is, from my point of view, the way to go about it for the Blinks. One big bada boom warp of damage. It is the most reliable, and you know what? Subjectively speaking, also the most fun. Now, about uh, some heavy duty Warframe buffs. Oh, I didn't have the Panzer of Ulpophila with me. I had good old Tau. And good old Tau is the helmet cyst puppy thing look how cool it looks but the point is i, I didn't have the volpa file with me so no vital procs for me and that still wasn't a concern in steel path for a companion buff i would recommend you go with the panzer volpa file considering how much crit you already got on the weapon i would recommend not to go with harrow since the crit multiplier is already in the bag and the bag is at the bank you can always go for more critical damage even though your multiplier is already at 6.6 .6, if i remember right 6.3 all right my bad nope that's enough critical damage as well Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets, absolutely my friends, a fantastic idea, not mandatory by any stretch of the imagination, however, you can go like so. When it comes to arcanes, these are a lot more important, you can go with arcane precision, but honestly, this is not necessary, you got more than enough flat damage, you got enough of that. Multiplier, fire rate for secondary weapons, what's it called, what's it called, no, honestly, I forgot about it, it's arcane velocity, on critical, uh, there you go, there you go. Fire rate for secondary weapons would be a good thing, considering that reload, that whole uh, delay thing, you can go for something like so. And Arcane Avenger, you can, but honestly, instead of this one, I would use my Energize or whatever else you want for your Warframe build. Another 45%, so I'm gonna go to something like 170-80% critical chance, that means I'm gonna be getting a whole lot of orange on the screen. And I do believe that's pretty much it for Warframe buffs. Now. I want to make one very important distinction. If you're going to be throwing at your weapon everything in the kitchen sink, if you're going to be using overshields to get crit from the new arcane, if you're going to be using Mirage's Eclipse and all whatnot, if you're going to be using Saturn's thing or whatever else, of course the weapon will perform very well. That doesn't mean the build is great and it certainly doesn't mean that the weapon is good. From my point of view, the weapon should stand on its own two feet and then you hit it with Supreme Warframe buffs. Because if you're gonna do that level of Warframe buffs, then my friends, everything, for the most part, should be an easy mode one shot. Is that the GOG stat? 380,000 on the GOG of the stat. Easy one shots galore. And when you don't see the multi shot, when you don't see a second damage number pump out of him, that means that the first bullet that reached him from the ones you are firing already did the killing. So do bear that one. That was 400,000, 450,000, 450,000, over 500,000, and that was a yellow crit. So that one on a 1.3 million, you get the point. These are Warframe buffs. If you're gonna throw this at your weapon, then you gotta kill. <laughs> it's as simple as that. This is how you kill. And I do believe, my friends, that's pretty much it. We gotta draw some conclusions regarding the Tenant Planks. For my two cents, it's not a great secondary weapon. It definitely is not. There are plenty of other more powerful. It wouldn't even make a top 10. Is it more powerful than the regular? Of course it is more powerful than the regular Planks. But I'm sorry to tell you, the regular Planks was like top 10 worst weapons in the game. It had a whole lot of crit, but because there's no status or not enough status, it was simply underperforming. As for the tenant version of the plane, considering the rate of fire, considering the projectiles or the number of damage instances you can put into your targets consistently, a heavier status chance was necessary from my point of view, at least 20%. It performs well, it's the flavor of the month, but 
Outside of that, there's really nothing to write home about except that big Bada Boom explosion. Perhaps the biggest advantage to it is the fact that it draws enemies in. You know another weapon that does that and it's a whole lot more powerful and fun to use? The Proboscis Cernos. But that's comparing primary weapons to secondary weapons. Not exactly a fair comparison, is it? Still, if you like this one, you should see the review on that one as well. For my two cents, I love playing with a weapon, with the additional fire rate, of course, you're gonna be charging your weapon a whole lot faster, which makes the whole play and build around the secondary fire mode a whole lot more enjoyable. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Hey, I would like to see this weapon build, the other weapon build, and so on and so forth. You gotta love yourself the precision on this one. You saw that was like a 30 meter, 30 meter plus hit easily on that one. You can also catch me on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, please consider supporting us via Patreon. There will be a who's shooting at me. There will be a link in the card in the upper portion of the screen right now. But until next time, my friends, where's the thing? Hey. Bye-bye.